Hi, my name is Lynn White. I'm the Education and Volunteer Specialist for Butler Soil and Water Conservation District. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I use worms to teach today. So I have my worm bin here. It's just a big plastic tote. And you can use this for teaching about the basic needs for animals. So if you think about basic needs, one of the first things that animals need is air. So we have air holes around the side of the box and also in the lid of the box. So our worms have got air to breathe. Animals also have to have food. And the food I give my worms is my garbage. Things like this, which is not really that recognizable, but this is the skin from cantaloupe that I fed them recently. So they've been working their way through. They're having a bit of trouble eating the skin, um, but all the soft juicy stuff was like perfect for them. Here are some skin I just put in there yesterday. So that first piece was in there for about three weeks. This was just put in there yesterday. And hopefully you can see it, but we have a worm on there already chowing down and having its lunch. So over the course of a few weeks, this will completely get broken down by the worms. Now, when I give the worms food to eat, everything I give them is um, fruit and vegetable. If you were to give them things like meat, they would eventually get to it. But the problem is, eventually, they let the food sit for a while to become soft enough. And if you think about the smell of roadkill, that's kind of the smell your box would be. Because if the meat would be in there um, for over a week before they get around to eating it. Um, so it's going to smell horrendous. So don't put meat in there. You also don't want to put anything oily in there. So anything that's got salad dressing on it or anything like that. And that's because it will block the worm's skin. And the skin goes back to air again worms actually breathe through their skin and for that air to pass through their skin if they're covered in oils that air won't be able to do that so I stick to fruit and vegetables that don't have any oil on them um, no cheese or anything else like that either because a lot of dairy has got um, has got oils in it and it's also going to smell kind of rank if it's in here for a few weeks so stick to fruit and vegetables um, so so far we've given them air and we've given them food Another important thing, another basic need for animals, is water. Now my worms get a lot of their water from the food they eat. But if it ever looks a bit dry, I do add more water. And I add plenty of water if I'm going to handle the worms. So we have air, we have food, we have water. The next thing they need is shelter. So if you think about different animals, like a baby bird, its shelter would be the nest. Um, a baby rabbit, its shelter would be in a burrow. Well, for the worms, their shelter is their bedding. And this is some of the material that I have. And it doesn't look like it originally did. This material, this bedding, started out as shredded newspaper and also some coconut fiber. And it was nice and damp to keep the worm's skin wet. But the, um, over time, the worms have actually eaten that bedding and they're turning it into compost, which we'll talk more about later. Um, but yep, so here is their shelter, their bedding. So if you look at an animal, animals need to have air, food, water, and shelter, and they're going to find that in their habitat. So habitat is the entire area that an animal lives in. So the box itself is the habitat. Within this box, they're going to find that food, water, air, and shelter. So this is my perfect habitat for worms. I'll tip it up so you can see inside. Um, so it looks kind of gross, doesn't exactly look like the kind of home that you would want to live in, but that's okay, it's not for you, it's for your worms. You're very hard working worms. Those hard working worms, as I mentioned, they're going to eat those materials and they're going to turn it into compost. So this is vermicompost, otherwise known as worm poop and it's great to use in your garden and with your house plants. Now it's too rich to use just on its own. It's got too much goodness in there. Um, so if you do use it around plants, make sure you are mixing it with plants himself. But, so the first thing I do is I teach about the basic needs. So we've covered that. Another thing you can teach is what will a worm eat and what won't? What can decompose? So you can have kids come up with a list of different materials such as, will he eat a pencil? Will he eat a pen? Will he eat a plastic fork? How about one of the, de um, the biodegradable plates? Um, so there's different things that you can put in there. 
Um, and you can make um, you can make guesses. You can have hypothesize which ones that they're going to actually eat, which ones are not. You can even start to make guesses on how long it will take for them to eat some of those materials. Not only that, but you can put in materials in one bin and have a separate bin and feed them different things and you can see which materials they prefer and which ones they don't. So maybe one you just put your fruit waste in and the other one you just put vegetable waste in. There's so many experiments that you can do looking at what the worms are willing to eat and what they're not willing to eat. Now I'm going to get a few worms out. Now usually when I get worms out I put them on either a plate that's got plenty of water on it to keep the worms body wet. Now remember water was one of the basic needs and they actually need that water on their skin to allow that air to pass through. So this helps them when they're breathing through that skin. And they're moist. Now with young kids, I'll just take a handful and I'll dump it on the plate. And I'll let them pick through it. You can have them count. Count how many worms they find. So like one, two, three. Well now I've found three worms. What would happen if a bird was to come along and to eat one? So we take a worm away, how many do we have left? One, two. So you can do some really basic math um, with the kids. You can also look at shapes. So I'm going to dump most of this back into my bin and I'll just leave a worm on there. So I've got this worm in the middle of the plate and just now it's making a circle. I don't know if you can see that. If you let the worm sit, they'll start to make different shapes. So it's great for preschoolers to look at the shapes and see if they can recognize like a circle, a triangle, a number one, a letter S. So it's great for the recognizing of shapes. You can also have them look at the worms and compare their bodies to a worm's body. So we have arms and legs helps us get around. Well, if you look at a worm, does a worm have legs? No. So how does it move? Well, it uses muscles in its body. Now, we think about muscles and showing people how big our arm muscles are and things. Um, obviously, the worms not having arms, they don't have arm muscles, but they do have muscles running from their head to their tail and also side to side along their body. And they'll squeeze the side to side muscles, they'll make them long and skinny. Think about squeezing a balloon or even squeezing a water balloon because worms are mostly made of water. So they squeeze those side to side muscles and it makes them long and skinny. And then you use the head to the tail muscles and they'll pull that tail towards the head. And then they'll squeeze long and skinny and then they'll pull their tail in. So they use the muscles to help them move. So we have muscles and they have muscles. Now we have hard things in our bodies. We have bones. You can ask the children if they think a worm has got bones. And they don't. They're invertebrates. They're animals without backbones. They have no bones. Sometimes when children see the worms, they think they look a lot like snakes. So you can do a comparison between a worm's body and a snake's body. Which one has got eyes? Well, it doesn't matter what book you look at. Most kids' books show worms having eyes. Yeah, they don't. And that's just fiction. But snakes do have eyes. So snakes have got eyes, worms don't. Snakes have got bones, worms don't. Snakes have got scales, worms don't. Snakes have got teeth, worms don't. And that's an important thing. If the worms don't have teeth, then can they bite you? And no, they can't. Um, they do tickle a bit if you hold them on your hand and they, they wiggle around, so it, it can tickle a bit if they're doing that, um, but they cannot hurt you. You can talk about senses. We've already just said that worms don't have eyes, which means they cannot see. They also don't have ears, so they can't hear. But it's kind of fun to like have the kids sneak up on the worms and yell boo really loud to see if the worm jumps. And they'll find that the worms don't jump and it's because they can't hear. So instead of hearing sound, they feel sound. They use their sense of touch. So you can have your kids put their hands down on a table and then knock with the other hand. And they'll hear the knocking, bang, 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 but they'll also feel the table shake, shake, shake. And that's how the worms know when something's happening around them. They feel the vibrations. So if there's a bird hopping on the ground, the worms will feel the vibrations.
vibrations from those footsteps or if there's a mole digging its way through the soil and um, the worms will feel those vibrations as well so they don't um, see they don't hear they do have a mouth we don't really know how well they can taste but i do know that they have favorites when i put food in there so it kind of tells me that they have um it's either going to be a taste or a texture issue for that they don't have a nose so if they don't have a nose can they smell shapes there's so many different things that you can do with young children with worms and you don't have to have your own worm bin to do it you go out in your yard and find worms you see them come up after a heavy rain now the worms in your yard are going to be larger than these the, the worms i have are called red wigglers and just like you get like thousands of different kinds of dogs it's the same thing with worms there's over 5,000 different kinds of earthworms the ones that you usually find in your yard are called night crawlers and they can get pretty big and they also get a lot fatter than these ones as well and it's sometimes easier for young hands to look at the night crawlers from your yard than it is these teeny tiny red wigglers one important thing though if you have a bunch of night crawlers you've been checking out don't try and keep them in a box like this night crawlers are really picky they like to burrow down into the soil and they can't do that in a worm bin and night crawlers don't like to be disturbed when you put food into a worm bin you have to bury it or you're going to encourage pests like fruit flies and every time you bury it you'd be disturbing the burrows for night crawlers and they will get up and leave they're going to leave through those air holes and you can't not give them air holes or they're not going to um, live at all so don't try and do a worm bin with night crawlers make sure you're using manure worms or red wigglers Asina fetida is like the fancy scientific name for it um, but yeah they're great worms for keeping in a worm bin because they're okay with having their home disturbed so i'm going to put this little guy back in there and um put the lid back on because it's getting kind of warm out here today and if you check out our website i've got a lot of other lessons on there different I other ideas for things that you can do with worms our website is www.butlerswcd.org and you can also find us on YouTube at ButlerSWCD. Thank you. Bye.